This video shows the steps required to configure a SON to operate with an AI1. The AI1 works with any version of the YSI ExoSond, versions 1, 2 or 3 and shorty versions as it has an inbuilt RS485 adapter which can communicate using the native language of the SOND. In this case, I have an XO3 SOND which also supports SDR12. So an XO3 may be used in the C1 port on the AI1 if the serial port is being used by another sensor such as the Andara DCS Doppler current sensor. The standard AI1 has a 6-pin microcircular wet mate connector on the bulkhead. A second port is pre-drilled which can be fitted with other options which include a push button switch in the case I've got here. Um, you can also fit another 6-pin connector such as if you had two sons used at different depths or you could have a bulkhead that would suit a Doppler current sensor DCS in this available port. But the default port, the default configuration is a single 6-pin microcircular connection connector. The default wiring on the 6-pin bulkhead is that both the RS485 serial and the SDR12 interfaces are pre-wired into the suitable terminals inside the AI1. So, to prepare the hardware for use, mainly it involves lubricating the connectors. As with many parts in the AI1 shipping kit, uh, you have a QR code on, on the packaging that you can scan to get instructions on how to prepare the cable. So what you mainly do is you look at the connector and you look to see if there's any debris inside the connector itself uh, and make sure they're nice and clean. If you find debris, you'll need to use compressed air um, to blow the debris out. So um, the cable to prepare the cable, we use Crytox grease. Now I've got mine in a uh, easy to dispense nail polish jar, but um, you may have it in another form. So the Crytox grease is often supplied with the, the sond materials. So the steps to um, lubricate the connector are that you apply the grease to the um, rubber parts of the male part of the connector and make sure that there's enough that most of the surfaces are covered and that the rubber is lubricated so it slides in and out of the connector nicely. Then you also lubricate the face of the female connector so that's fully lubricated. And you repeat on the bulkhead connector and you repeat on the male part on the sonde itself. So once this is lubricated, you fit the male end into the bulkhead connector on the AI1 and you put the female end on the connector onto the sond. And once we do that, you'll actually see, assuming that the AI1 is turned on, you will see the LEDs start to light up on the exo sond. So once you see the LEDs, you know that you have power to the sond and you can then use the core Exo Core software to configure the sensor for how we need it. This demonstration looks at the Core Exo software and looks at the features that we use when pairing an Exo for, for use with an AR1 system. So the available instrument should appear under your instrument connection panel, assuming that the blue light is flashing on the sond, such as what happened when we plugged the sond into the AI1 and the AI1 provided power to the sond. If it doesn't appear, you can use the scan for Bluetooth devices button and that will start scanning for potential um, exo sonds in the area. If your sond doesn't appear, make sure that your Bluetooth adapter on your computer is on and make sure that the blue light is flashing on the, on the exo sond. If the blue light is not flashing, you may need to um, use a magnet to wake up the Bluetooth connection, or you may um, remove and apply power so that the Bluetooth is reactivated on power up. So once the sond is appearing in the instrument connection panel, use the connect button to connect. 
and what that when that happens this area will go green and then we can go to the deployment tab which in this demonstration is the only um, set of features that we'll look at for what you need to configure so this assumes that we already have a SOM that is calibrated and we've looked at the data and we're happy with the data and we are ready to deploy the SOM. You can either create a template from scratch or you can read a template from what is already being used on the SOM and use that as a basis for your template. In this example, I will create a template from scratch. So the first step is to enter our deployment name. Um, for the sake of this, I will just call it Demon. And then you set your logging interval time. So the AR1 is programmed by default to log data from the SON on a uh, 15 minute interval. So for the sake of simplicity, we will be using the same interval for this interval here, 15 minutes. Now, if you wish to change the interval, you need to change the program that's running on the AR1 as well as the logging interval on the SOND ideally. So then you can enter parameters such as your site name and the username and give some detailed description if you want. Then we have two tabs, one called the DCP adapter output, which is relevant if we're using the SCR12 interface. And then we also have the advanced tab, which um, is where we set up the output mode of the SOND. So assuming we have an SDI-12 um, suitable sensor, then we can look at the SDI, uh, the DCP adapter output section. And here we set the SDI-12 address. Most commonly that is zero, but it can also be one if you've got multiple SONs connected to the system. And then we select the parameters that we would like to have in the output, such as the temperature, so the steps are you highlight the parameter and then you use the right arrow to shift it across to the selected parameters. And then you continue um, to highlight the parameters that you're after and list them in the selected parameters. And if you want to change the order, you can highlight and then you use the down or up buttons to change the sequence at which they appear. So those define the parameters that the SON will report to the AR1 via the SDI-12 data bus. And you can have multiple SONs on the same SDI-12 bus if they all have unique SDI-12 addresses. So once we've um, completed the DCP adapter output section, we'll move on to the advanced section. Now, the default for the logging mode is the normal mode, which means that the sonde will take a measurement at its programmed interval. And if the AR1 asks for a measurement, it will take a new measurement at the AR1 interval and respond at the, that new measurement to the AR1. However, that can cause a conflict if the sonde is taking a measurement according to its schedule and the AR1 requests a measurement, which can be a problem if either one is doing a wipe when the other one is requesting a measurement because if a wipe is occurring when a measurement is being made a lot of optical values and conductivity will be uh, erroneous values so to fix that we use the sample and hold logging mode the sample and hold logging mode means that when the son takes a measurement according to its internal schedule that it records the data and it holds that data available to the AR1 for when the AR1 requests a measurement. So if the sonde is measuring every 15 minutes and then the AR1 comes along and requests a measurement, it will provide the most recent measurement to the AR1. And that means that it is not causing a conflict between the sonde wanting to do a measurement and the AR1 wanting to do a wipe because they the AR1 just receives a previously held value. So we highly recommend that you use sample and hold. The advantage of using the internal logging is that the SOND records data as well as the AR1 recording data. So if the AR1 has a failure for any reason, the SOND will still keep a record of the data, such as if the AR1 was damaged or the cable was damaged and the AR1 failed to get a 
receive data from the sonde. You could realize that through the telemetry system and you could still manually download data from the sonde and upload that to the data historian. So we do recommend that you use logging on the sonde and we do recommend that you use sample and hold as a logging mode so that the same data is stored on the sonde as well as being stored on the AR1. So once you've set up these parameters, then you can save and apply the template to the sonde. And then you can start internal logging at the next available interval. We can then disconnect from the sonde and um, continuing setting up the boy.